Don't be afraid of the dark Be careful with stars All of the pressure's gonna drive you crazy Cause you rise to the madness In the morning it's all gonna vanish Don't be afraid of the dark Be careful with stars Not every light is gonna guide you, baby Don't let it rain on your spark Keep it close to your heart All of the pressure's gonna drive you crazy So here we are driving the 2023 Cadillac CTSV 4 Blackwing, <laughs> which is that's a mouthful. Um, but uh, in the current Cadillac nomenclature, Blackwing is the part of that equation that matters because that is the part that really articulates the fact that this car is built for performance. And what better way to exemplify performance than with a 3.6 liter twin turbo, 472 horsepower, 445 foot pounds of torque, monster of an engine. And let me tell you, this thing delivers. It has got plenty of thrust. I mean, it's, I would, I would say this is the most ferocious six cylinder that I think I've ever driven. And that includes my 992 GTS. Um, I mean, it's just so willing and it makes great noise too. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but behind me, there's a symphony of pops and crackles on the overrun and a nice bassy swell as I'm stepping into the throttle and allowing more power to build. I mean, it's a great thing. I mean, what else do you want? Really responsive punch, too. Now, this is not your grandparents' Cadillac, let me tell you that. The engineers over at GM that worked on this thing really wanted to accomplish two things. One, they wanted to make a car that could serve both for just the everyday enthusiast to be able to drive at a you know a nice canyon road like we're doing today or to be able to take it to a track and really enjoy it on a circuit and i think i think they've done a pretty good job of that um you know you can tell that there's been a lot of thought into all the systems on this car so for example the brake pedal on this car is actually brake by wire which is a little scary when you think about it <laughs> but there's some pros here which is the pedal feel is always strong i mean no matter what the the situation is it's the exact same now there's a con to that which is you know it's not communicating the difference in uh braking power and change as much as a regular standard brake pedal would uh, but i could tell you that for my preference and this is the first time i'm really paying attention to it i think i like this better um the other thing is you know, don't worry about brake by wire. There are redundancies built into the system to make sure you don't actually kill yourself <laughs> if, the, if the wire part fails. So uh, it's a pretty good system overall. The next thing is when we're talking about brakes, the actual rotors themselves and the pistons themselves from the actual calipers, we're talking 380 mil uh, rotors in the front, two piece of course, and Brembo six pot calipers in the front. Um, the rears come standard with uh, almost uh, 14 inch uh, rotors in the rear with four piston calipers. So 
it's a really, really stout braking system and they accomplish those sizes, and this is the best part, they accomplish that size brakes still maintaining an 18 inch rim. And these rims are forged for strength. Uh, and that was important because the 18s give you um, better just I think comfort for like everyday driving, which is important. I mean, the easiest thing in the world for a manufacturer to do is throw 20s on or, or bigger on your car. And that does two main things uh, wrong. Number one, it adds weight, which deducts from performance. And then two, because there's less tire, it means that you are gonna suffer from less comfort. So, you know, again, going back to the initial objective of coming up with a car that is both not just good for the track, but also good for the street and for a weekend mountain drive. 18s is the way to go. And yet they were able to do that while keeping brakes that are very, very large and very, very powerful to boot. That is a engineering feat. Now, if you think we're done talking about brakes, you're wrong because there's one more element to these brakes, which I think is amazing in itself. They Underneath this car, the engineers built a bunch of different veins and air ducts um, to pipe air in that is going underneath the car to blow right on to those really, really hot rotors and keep them cool, especially under harsh conditions. So that's just one more trick up their sleeve to make sure that you've got fantastic braking power. And I can tell you with confirmation, this car stops amazingly well. Now. On top of all the other bits, what is GM known for right now? Well, from a performance standpoint, they have some of the world's best chassis engineers. And I think this is a vehicle where that actually is exemplified perfectly. This is running the MagRide version four uh, shocks and struts. And they are, I mean, to I think to date, they are probably the world's fastest reacting suspension components to date. Of course, it's all software based, uh, but it, it tunes the magnetic fluid to adjust to every behavioral situation that the car encounters for both comfort and performance. And that is such a delicate balancing act. And somehow this car does seem to produce a ride that is both. Like here, here's a good example, because I know for most people that might go over your head, but when you drive this car and you're going around and turn harsh, most cars create a lot of body roll. A lot of performance cars are so stiff that they produce almost no body roll. This car gives the car body roll, but it's body roll for the sake of feeling what the car is doing. It's on purpose. It's like, the car starts to squat and it communicates to you that it's loaded up on that side. And so therefore, you know, be, you know, be kind of careful on the throttle, be kind of careful on your steering angle. And that kind of communication keeps you, the driver, very much involved. So the steering part of this equation is the one part that I, I can nitpick because in terms of the, the actual calibration of the wheel, I'm not super happy with it. I mean, it, it tends to like give you varying degrees of weight at times where I don't necessarily think it should. I mean, I've found it kind of surprising where sometimes I'll be putting turning input in only to have it give me weight increase when I'm straining out the wheels. So in other words, you would expect the wheel to get stiffer when you're turning in, not when you're straightening out. And sometimes I think it kind of does a little bit of the opposite. That in itself kind of bugs me a little bit, but it it's not the end of the world and you kind of get used to it. But, um, you know, that's just something to be careful of. Now, in terms of the rack itself, this rack is incredibly sharp. It's got really, really good turn in. And I mean, it, it just, the nose of this car just dives into the corner exactly how you portray it in your mind. Um, and I love that. Now, I think a lot of that also comes from the fact that this thing comes with Mitchell and PS4 S's from the factory. I mean, that's an amazing tire, obviously. And it just does a great job in this application. So let's talk the obvious elephant in the room transmission. This car does come with a six-speed manual. And matter of fact, when you're specking this thing out, 
the six speed is a no cost base option <laughs> so like i would always choose that over the automatic unfortunately in this particular press car it came automatic but that's okay it's this does have a 10 speed auto uh and i find it to be relatively good um it does seem to shift gears quickly when it's in v mode um however it's a little sluggish sometimes just like a little bit it's not really a problem and I wouldn't say it's anywhere near as good as the Porsche PDK but it does seem to have a good sense of what gear to be in and when for the given situation it's just that sometimes the the shifts and comfort mode and stuff are kind of a little sluggish and as it pertains to performance driving I mean the shifts are hard it like really thumps and I mean I guess that's a good thing because you know it makes you feel like you're definitely in something uh, performance oriented um, and yeah I mean it it's nothing that I would write home to mom about but you know it's it's a relatively good box now there is one thing to say which is the auto does give you launch control uh, which if you're into that kind of thing it's a great it's a great option right the second thing is the auto does make the car weigh a little bit heavier so it's about Eh, roughly 100 pounds heavier with the automatic transmission over the stick and the auto does help your 0 to 60 time drop to th about 3.9 is what the factory claims um, but the stick is a few sec like it's about 0.3 or 4 seconds higher than that so not a huge difference of course if you're buying a car like this you're probably not drag racing uh, this is really more of a car that's designed to be kind of a four-door Camaro right so it's the it's the not quite Corvette I think the CTS V5 Blackwing that is more I think the four-door Corvette and this is more the four-door Camaro I think that's probably a pretty good way to think about it Wow incredible thrust and not a bad sound at all. This would not be a complete review if we didn't at least address the CT4 Blackwing's Blackwing, right? So yes, this wing here, um, it's a nice little ducktail spoiler. I think it gives a nice aesthetic to the car. It does help with some downforce. Um, and if you were to spend the extra money and get the carbon fiber package, you do get a more pronounced wing as well as a, a carbon fiber version of this lower diffuser, which also helps with aerodynamics. Now, Cadillac claims that at 189 miles an hour, which is top speed, uh, you'll actually feel about 180 pounds worth of downforce. That's pretty decent, but who in the right mind is gonna take this almost 200 miles an hour? And where are you gonna do it? <laughs> but either way, nice to know that this stuff actually does something. So there's a ton of design elements built into this package. For example, this grill at first glance just looks like a fancy grill, but uh, upon closer inspection, these lines here are actually silhouettes of the famous Cadillac crest. Uh, and what I like about them is they're painted this uh, kind of graphite color, which catches the light in an interesting way and causes it to look like little shark teeth, which is kind of cool. Also in the front, you've got all these openings here because they're feeding air into this monster of, a, of an engine which is great and it needs it to keep it cool so you've got these vents here here and here for the oil exchangers uh, as well as the radiators uh, for the transmission and the engine right behind the bigger side of the grill um, really good incorporation of you know form and function I think and probably one of the better looking front ends only thing is you'll probably also notice that it's got these little little uh, side pieces here and if you were to get the carbon fiber package it would actually have a lower uh, carbon fiber lip underneath this well I can tell you this this car has scrapes on both of these little side pieces here uh, which tells me that 
This is pretty low, you know, just from the factory. It doesn't have nose lift or anything. So if you do get the carbon fiber package, just know that that lip being even lower than this is gonna absolutely get demolished. So I would think twice about that, even though I think it would look amazing with this front end. Also, I really like this light incorporation here. This is one piece and it houses the LED projector lights as well as the daytime running lights. Um, and it really creates a very aggressive looking front end. And they've even hitting the parking sensors here really, really nicely. Just overall, a really sleek design. And also when you're driving, because of this design in front, this hood line is very low. So you don't even see the hood when you're driving. It's just windshield and road. So inside the black wing, you've got a really nice assortment of materials. You got leather wrap steering wheel, which you can also get in Alcantara, depending on package. You've got, with the automatic, you've got these really nice aluminum uh, shift levers, which have a nice action to them. You do have carbon fiber trim throughout the interior cabin, which is nice. And on the doors, you do get leather, soft touch plastics, uh, some Alcantara, and then at the base, you get just the, the hard plastics, which are the cheaper ones, but you can forgive it. I mean, that's kind of where you're gonna kick the door by accident on the way in or out anyway, so that's fine. It has an eight inch touch screen, which is very responsive. It comes with Apple CarPlay as well as Android Auto all good stuff and it's pretty responsive um i do like the almost frameless look of the rear view mirror um this one has a sunroof which is great i will say one more thing my seat is actually at its lowest setting and um, i'm 6'1 so here's the thing if i were to track this thing with a helmet on right now i don't think i would have enough room unless i start to have to lean back the chair which is not optimal Instead, I think you can option this with no sunroof and that gives you the ability to uh, have a little bit more room up top clearing the, the helmet. So just, you know, a little piece of advice there if you plan on actually using this for what it's designed to do. Other than that, the dashboard I think is great. It's covered in leather and it's what I appreciate. It's not a large size. It's actually small enough that you feel really up front and connected to the car. It comes with a 15 speaker AKG uh, stereo system, which is relatively good. It doesn't have a lot of low end bass, but the highs and mids come in really crystal clear. It's satisfying. And other than that, um, the seats themselves, like I said earlier, they're, they're very comfortable and they give you a lot of support for whatever you're doing. All in all, a great interior. All right, there's one more thing I definitely have to address. Um, and it has to do with the back of this thing. I, um, well, first off, the trunk line to me is a little jarring because normally the trunk has a line here and it opens at the top there. But on these guys, it wraps all the way over and the line basically is hidden against the taillight, which I think is good on paper, but there's something a little strange about that to me. I don't, I don't know, maybe it's just me. It also causes this headlight to, or this taillight to be stretched, which I don't know. I mean, I think it looks okay. I think it could be done better. But the biggest problem is really this rear door. Watch what I mean. Gotta unlock it. All right, first off, see how this door opens? The angle here, it's not great, um, but mostly because of this rear haunch here. Because if you're a tall guy like me, and I'm about 6'1", 6'2", watch how my head has to contort in order to fit in here, all right? And then also my head right now, I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's, it's uh, yeah, it's hitting. <laughs> and to get out, you really gotta kind of yoga your way out. <laughs> so um, not for adults. However, I'm not gonna complain because if you've got uh, young kids, say under 10 years old, I mean, it's great. If they're in a booster seat, it's great. If they're like, infants and they got the big child seat thing or whatever in the back it's not going to work well trust me on that i've already tried <laughs> so um but other than that this thing does have really great aesthetics and i think it does attract a younger audience which is great um and i'm looking forward to the ctv4 blackwing having a next generation which i think can improve upon some of these interesting lines even more hopefully attracting even more buyers, keeping it alive.
I think it's pretty clear that the engineers and designers at GM that created these black wings really treated it like a passion project. They wanted to have performance oriented vehicles that drive enthusiasts actually want. And how did Cadillac do this? Well, it pulled from its rich racing history and applied its learnings and technology to these road going cars. And what is the result of that? Well, it produced vehicles that have such high performance capabilities that the average driver won't ever reach. And at the same time, created design elements that are really interesting and dare I say it, beautiful to look at. That's really unique in today's buyer's market. I think that these cars are great for so many reasons, but the biggest one of all is how they make you feel behind the wheel. I loved my time driving this car, and the more I drove it, the more I fell in love with it. I highly recommend either Blackwing to anybody looking. But that being said, it does have one major flaw. I think if you owned the car, you would find yourself loving it, but constantly explaining to others why it's a special vehicle. That can be a little frustrating, and it's a problem really rooted in marketing and brand awareness, but it is a great vehicle, and we should praise it for what it is, not for who makes it necessarily. And from that perspective, as a drive enthusiast, I think we should strive to have great experiences with vehicles that are great, not just vehicles that we know are praised by others to get that confirmation. That's just my take on it, but ultimately dollars talk. And if you love something, you gotta buy it. Otherwise, guess what? Manufacturers won't build it. So if you've been watching to this point, guys, I wanna thank you. A lot of work went into this particular video, so I hope you guys enjoyed it or learned something. If you did, please go ahead and like, share, and subscribe. Uh, I hate asking, but uh, that stuff really does help the channel. And of course, if there's any questions, put them down below in the comments. I do read pretty much all of them. And uh, other than that, I'll catch you guys on the next one.